It's 8 o'clock. Uh, time to go over the agenda for the Board of Commissioners meeting for April the 7th. Mr. Gurley, I think you got Mr. Grimes coming for the invocation. I will. Okay. Uh, you also going to do the pledge? I will. Okay. Then we've got the approval of the minutes. All right, we're going to discussion of the agenda. Uh, Mr. Wood, if you want to take this from okay. here. Sir. All right. The, uh, we've got two special recognitions, um, both of them on uh, retirements within the uh, Sheriff's Department. Under unfinished business, we'll have uh, Dan Mace here uh, from Mosley Architects, and he'll do a presentation of the architectural plans and schematic drawings for the satellite jail. On consent agenda, uh, we have two public hearings that we're all we're doing is uh, scheduling them for April 21 on a couple of rezoning matters. Uh, Mr. Chairman, well, yes, can I go back to this um, presentation on architectural plans? Yeah. Once that's presented, what's our next step? Uh, it depends on uh, if he's ready to go. I think he's pretty close, uh, and so that's part of the update. Uh, we know we've gotten several permits in. I'm not sure if he's gotten every permit in at this point. But as soon as he's finished, uh, we're ready. To, the next step would be to uh, put the bids on the street, ready to go. But so, that's probably going to be in our second meeting for this meeting. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Uh, I, I misspoke. We've got to do a pre-qualification of contractors. Okay. And uh, so that's the next step. And then once they pre-qualify those, then they'll give those bid packets. Okay. And at that point, then it'd be a standard bid. So I'm hopeful that uh, probably the last meeting in May, maybe the first meeting in June, uh, you could be awarding a bid. Okay. Let, uh, while, we, while we stop, Mr. Gurley, you got anything for the appointment committee this we morning? We do have some. Okay. All right. Now, Mr. Wood. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I skipped that, didn't I? Okay. Uh, consent agenda. We talked about that. We have the two public hearings. Uh, number three is a petition for addition to the street maintenance system. This is a Clovis Court in Lancaster Point subdivision. As you all know, we have to uh, sign off on those for the DOT to take them into the secondary road system. Uh, we have a small increase from Gateway. I've given you a memo on that. Uh, the Gateway Board is recommending that. Uh, Pam and I have reviewed it. We've reviewed their uh, amended budget, which will be coming to you, I think, at the next meeting, uh, That they will, because they will vote on it at Gateway's next meeting. Uh, everything's in order there. Uh, the only thing I would comment on there is uh, uh, I think that uh, the board and uh, Mr. Fontana have done a great job in uh, turning Gateway around in the last six months, and uh, everything is running extremely well. Wayne Community College uh, hangar lease at the Wayne Executive uh, Jet Port. I'm going to ask Tommy if he'll give you a little bit of update on that because he's been dealing with uh, the college on getting that one taken care of. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. On that one, we, uh, the existing lease expired in 2005, so we renegotiated the lease um, from 2005 to 2010. Um, there was an increase built into that, so we built that into the new lease. In addition, 2010 to 2015, uh, there was another uh, increase uh, on that. We also cleaned up the lease language a little bit and uh, I think more clearly defined um, who was responsible for paying for the utilities and how that split would work out there. So um, that lease would put that for, uh, running from 215 to 2020 now. I'll be happy to answer any questions on that. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mayor, it's not related, related to this, but. <coughs> If I remember when I was on the jet port committee, there were some other leases that were pending out mm -hmm. at the jet port. Mm -hmm. is, is there any, do we still have some outstanding leases that haven't been done? Uh, when we took over the authority, I think in 2009, uh, we assumed those leases. So they have a valid lease, we just haven't cleaned the leases up to stipulate that it's the county of Wayne now, but as a successor to the lease, we, they still have 
valid leases, but we are trying to uh, update all of those. I think we've got a we've got a, a good handle on um, who who's in what hangar, the rent amounts that they have, and some of the the names of the companies have changed. But we've got all that, and we're we're in the process of cleaning that up too. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, one other yes, question there. And, and I see that the amount of this was uh, thirty nine fifty three on a quarter. Yes, sir. Is that in line with what the preceding lease was on? It's actually um, what it's twenty percent more higher. Every five years, you were supposed to go up ten percent, and when it expired, it so it didn't go up. So we we backed that up, and would now treat it as if it went into effect. Right. And if I'm understanding why we're charging that is that the airport is a separate fund. It's an enterprise it's fund. Enterprise fund, mm -hmm. so you'd actually have to. Okay. And Tommy's also worked out with them an estimation on the sewer uh, yeah, for, that that, for that building coming out of there on the condensation for the HVAC system. Okay. Well, good. Thank you. The uh, next item, number six, is to convey 810 Bain Street uh, to the Wayne County Board of Education. Uh, we think you ought to do this because they've been using it since 1924. <laughs> uh, and it just came up that uh, I don't even know how we found it, but bottom line is we just never conveyed it to them. Uh, they've been using it as an operations center, so we're just kind of tidying up things, and we think you should convey it over to them. Where is Bain Street? Yeah. That I don't know. Behind the. Yeah. Runs along behind uh, what was Goldsboro Middle School. It's the alternative school now, but it's. Uh, yeah. Where it runs right parallel behind the baseball field at Goldsboro Middle School, where Goldsboro Middle School was. The name is changed. But that's Bain Street. Across from Wages. <coughs> Okay. Mr. Burns uh, tells me the way we found it was we were reviewing the uh, listings of all our property for the insurance, and that's when we found it. Did you find any more? Not that I'm aware of. Anything else? Just, just put a price on it and remember that budget. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so we've got that, and then we have a... Um, a resolution uh, declaring Child Abuse Prevention Month in Wayne County. Who wait on that? Who wants to volunteer? That needs to be read. Hmm? Yes, sir. Who wants to volunteer? Okay. I'll read it. Mr. Kamar. Child Abuse Prevention. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Sure. Yeah. Under consent agenda, uh, we'd like to add a number eight which is the appointment of Joe Jesse Tucker to the Thoroughfare Fire Protection District Commission. Uh, this is a recommendation from the Thoroughfare Fire Protection District. Uh, they had a board member on when we sent the packet of information and uh, they looked at the signatures there and they realized that uh, they needed to change because one of their commissioners was no longer with them. So we'll add that as number eight. Does anybody have a problem with adding that? You did check and make sure he lived in our district? He does live in there. Okay. Okay. Under new business, uh, we have a motion to approve the architect selection for the 911 center and authorize the county manager to negotiate a contract. Uh, as I said in the memo to you that's in the packet, uh, Mission Critical performed the detailed study and as y'all know, they're going after a grant for us now on this 911 building. Uh, one of the things I did want to emphasize to you is originally we talked about that the architect would, would look at uh, either a renovation of the Jeffers building or a new building. All of the architectural firms that we talked with discouraged uh, the uh, renovation. And in fact, one brought uh, pieces to cut, that were to scale and demonstrated that we couldn't fit in what we need in the Jeffers building even on that different floor. And so they've all convinced us that we ought to just change this. The scope of work would just be to design a new building. Uh, there are other issues as well. 
Uh, for instance, there should be fenced-in parking, more security. Uh, it shouldn't be right on the road like it is uh, where somebody could ram it, things of those kinds of things. So from a safety standpoint, the Jefferson <coughs> building really uh, doesn't have the kind of security on it that you'd like to have on a 911 center. So uh, what we're recommending to you is the company we're recommending is Stewart <coughs> Cooper Newell out of Gastonia. Uh, they have a lot of experience on public safety facilities. Um, the one thing I wanted to stress to you is, is that when we talked to Phil Penny, uh, he made it clear that we cannot actually hire the architect and go forward with this until and unless we get the grant. And as y'all know, if we don't get the grant, we wouldn't have the funding to move forward with it right now. We'd have to drop back and decide what we're going to do. If we get the grant, we can't spend any, uh, we can't get reimbursed for anything we spend before that. So what we're proposing to you is, is that you uh, accept the committee's recommendation, Stuart Cooper and Newell, let us go ahead and be negotiating the contract, but we won't present it to you for approval uh, until we get word on the grant, which is supposed to be, Mel tells me, around mid-May normally, but sometimes it bleeds into June. But we should know sometime in the next uh, month to two months if we got the grant, and then we're ready to move forward. So, question, Mr. Payne. Since we're not going to go in this old facility, there is no room to expand. And maybe I'm getting ahead of the uh, curve here. But are we looking at any locations yet? And we were discussing that. No, uh, we haven't looked at any locations yet, but we have some in mind. Uh, we did, did have a second meeting with Greene County, so we're, that was my we're question. waiting to hear uh, back from them on a couple of things there, uh, you know, how, how deep that interest is. Uh, that may play into the decision of location two. We do know that uh, our, init our initial thoughts right now, Bill, are that, uh, as you know, we have the problem we have right now is our backup is at the Board of Elections. Right. Both of those, are, they're too close together. Uh, the other thing is they're on the same electrical circuit. So we want to be <coughs> far enough away uh, that we have that um, distance separation so that if we did have a tornado or a hurricane or whatever it might be, uh, that we've got better chances of, of one of the two facilities surviving. Uh, the, uh, and then the second thing is, is you'd like to have them on different <coughs> electrical circuits. Uh, you'll still have uh, emergency generators, but obviously you'd prefer to stay on regular power. With uh, but this would, have, with a new facility, it would afford us the opportunity to have uh, parking uh, enclosed, fenced for our employee parking, um, more security on the facility, uh, less chance of someone getting near the actual building, uh, trying to ram it or whatever it might be. So the bottom line is, we're not sure exactly where it would go, but, but we know the certain parameters we're looking at at that point. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Doherty. <clears throat> Am I understanding that most of this, if not all of the cost of construction, would actually be through a grant through the 911 boards? Board. That's correct. It's okay. 911 board, and that's what Phil Penny is uh, submitting on our behalf now. Okay. It's mission critical. Okay. And that's what we'll know, like I said, mid-May, latest probably mid-June, uh, and then we'll move forward with it. So again, the recommendation today is simply to accept uh, the committee's recommendation on Stuart Cooper Newell. And I will say, we interviewed five very good firms. Uh, any of them could have done the job. But uh, they had uh, particular expertise in this area, and we, were, uh, we felt like they uh, King did the best job on it. Mr. Chair. Mr. Mann. Uh, George, uh, even, even though we, we apply for a grant, um, there's still going to be some county money that's got to go into this. <clears throat> Is that correct? We're going to have to spend some money to county. Do you have any idea what, what we're uh, it depends, estimating? It depends on what they give you. Uh, it could be, I mean, they could fund the whole thing or they could fund a part of it. Uh, I would also remind you that we have a fairly good balance built up in that fund. And as Joe knows only too well, the state is so restrictive on those funds that we've built it up 
and it's it's limited to the use of uh, what you can do inside the building so what we may do if the grant comes back and it doesn't fully cover it is then we'll ask them can we release some of that funding because otherwise all they're going to do is bleed it down over a series of years and they are in fact they're doing that now i think we had a fund balance at one point of about 1.8 million and what they're doing is they're giving us roughly 300,000 less for our operating budget uh, than we need and the, and what they're doing is now they want to take that to 1.5 1.2 1, 900 so my argument is well if they're going to take it over a series of five years let's just ask if we can put it into the building if that's what we need to do because they're going to grab it it's, it's just whether it's going to be slow or fast and we'd prefer to stick it into the building and I think they probably would because it would cut down on how much grant money they had to do and, and, and the reason that, that fund balance in that account has gone up so high, they are so restricted on how you can spend it. I mean, the, in, some of the improvements that we've made over the last several years, they wouldn't let us use it for. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's so restricted is the reason it's built up. And, I, and now that it's, like George says, now that it's built up, uh, they're not going to just let it later. They're going to they're gonna rob Peter to pay Paul. Yeah. Sir, so we don't anticipate we don't anticipate take, taking any money from uh, the county's fund balance on this. Uh, I wouldn't. Ha I wouldn't rule it out yet, Ray. I just don't know until I find out. Until we find out what they're going to come back with on the grant, and at that point, then uh, we'll get with Phil Penny and and see what it covers on our estimate on the building, and and then go from there. Okay. Thank you. But but again, before we start using that, I'd like to. I'd like to look at that 911 state restricted funds because as Wayne said, they're basically, I guess the easy way, uh, it's more complicated than this, but the easy way to think about it is they won't let you use it on anything except equipment inside the four walls of the 911 center. That's it. And it can't be used on personnel costs. It's equipment. So you can see how restricted that is. I mean, once you've replaced the consoles and, and the, the phones and things like that, I mean, it, you know, mm -hmm. you're done. Can I follow up? Yeah. I know we got to deal with what, the, what it is now, how restrictive it is, but it seems like I saw one of those emails that Marsha sent us that there was a bill before the General Assembly that may be loosening the... <laughs> well, there is. We, 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 ha we, we have some champions in the legislature, and the NCACC tries to get a bill through every year yeah. to do this. It's been a priority for NCACC. I for think we need to talk year. to our friends in the legislature and yeah. encourage them to move forward. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think there's a general recognition that it's, it's overly strict. I'll give you an example. In, um, in Georgia, the fee is instead of $0.60, cent, it's about $1.50 per phone. But it pretty much funds the 911 operation, including the personnel. Mm. And that way it's almost a totally fee-supported operation uh, in every county. Mm. But as I'm understanding that also, half of that is actually a local 911 fee. Is that correct? So they got a state one, a 911 fee and a local? You know, I don't remember that. I just know that... Uh, it funds it all. Uh, we look, it funds it. Yeah. You know, there, I mean, there's a very small subsidy from the county going into it. Well, it's gotten rather expensive. There's no doubt about yeah. it. So, we'll so it really comes down to you want to fund it on property tax primarily, or do you want to, right. or do you want to fund it as a fee-supported operation? And I think there's a there's a good argument to be made. It ought to be a fee-supported operation. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, okay. that's a state issue. Let's move on. Okay, um, the next thing is our facilities committee has met, I think at least twice since we reported back to you. Uh, they've been very busy. Uh, we've got kind of a laundry list of things we're working on, uh, but we wanted to bring five things up to your attention today and ask you for um, action on those. The first is we need to replace the roof at the Farm Services Building. Uh, this is the newer building on the lower end of the current agricultural offices. Uh, it's a good building, needs to be maintained for future use, even after the Ag and Convention Center is constructed. 
Uh, Milford has an estimated cost of $97,450. Uh, this funding is already in his current budget on it. We've got uh, money set aside for facilities maintenance and it would come out of there. So we're recommending that you let us go ahead with that project now. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Payne. Would you not agree that the rest of that facility is, would be too expensive to repair to keep? Well, the committee's looking at yeah. that. Uh, you know, there's still an issue about what we want to do with the Wayne Center. Uh, but also, we've started having discussions about if we were to vacate it, what would we use in that area? The general consensus, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, the general consensus is, is this build, this part of the building is in good shape and could, whatever we do there, we would not want to demolish it, we keep it. The rest of it, uh, you may very well want to take down. Yeah, well, my opinion is pretty cut up. It's not ADA accessible. And, um, yeah, the old part. You even got to walk out on the, on the sidewalk on the street to even go to the bathroom. That's right. And that's the part we're saying we would not keep. I agree. But Thank this you. part is a solid building and may even, depending if we put something else there, could be the, could be the start of something we would expand. Okay. So we want to preserve it. But the other part, yeah, it's, it's an issue. Thank you. Okay. Number two is replace the leaking roof of the Dudley, Dudley, Dudley EMS station. Uh, the current one is a flat roof and we've had problems with it. We want to replace it with an A-frame roof using in-house labor. Uh, Milford's estimated the materials will be about $13,000. And again, we have this funding in our current budget for facilities maintenance. So this is the second project we'd like to go ahead and do in the current uh, fiscal year with that money. And just and for y'all's information, that the county does own that building. That is not one of the buildings that we're leasing. Yeah. And, and Mr. Chairman, if I could Mr. point Carter. out, we're actually going to do that in-house. We're not going to be subbing that out. So it, we're, our crews are actually going to do that. Yeah. <clears throat> the third thing is, is we want to demolish the old facility services office building that's located in the parking lot of the health department. That's the old brick building right behind the health department. Is everybody, I may not have described it very well, but it sits in the middle of the parking lot is the best way to put it. And there's two issues with that. One, the building's in poor condition and it needs to come down. The other is it sits over the drainage system for the health department. The building's in poor condition. The drainage system needs to be enlarged as well in order to prevent flooding in the back door of the health department. I don't know if y'all, most of us go through the front door. If you go through the back door, there's a slight curb there. Then after that, there are steps going down. So if that parking lot, if the drainage doesn't work well enough and fast enough, the parking lot acts like a swimming pool. It collects the water and then it jumps the curb and starts going into the building. So we need to fix that drainage system to protect the, the health department building and the, and the drainage system, the building is sitting on top of it. So first course of action is we need to remove that building and then a second project we'll come back to you with is Milford will come back with a plan uh, to uh, fix that drainage system so it ties back into the cities and can handle the flow. Uh, and we're you know, the assumption there is, is that the, uh, and we'll have to check it out, but the assumption is, is that the city's drainage system is not a problem in terms of their pipe size, because it's not going to do us any good to enlarge our pipes if we tie into a drainage system that's still restricting the flow. But that's the problem we're trying to correct there. And we're also just trying to take down some of these derelict buildings we've got and clean it up. Uh, Number four, we want to demolish the vacant child services coordinator building near the health department facing Ash Street. Uh, it's in bad shape and needs to be removed. Uh, this would also free up space for any additional building or parking we may need at the health department as part of its expansion. That building is vacant, it's not being used. That's right. The one next to it is being used by uplift. Okay. Number five. We want to authorize a request for qualifications to hire an electrical, mechanical, and structural engineering firm to evaluate and design a backup generator and replacement chiller units for the county's data center. And if you're not familiar, that's located in the courthouse annex. Uh, 
We cannot afford to lose power to this facility as the computer equipment in there will overheat. And we had an issue with that uh, last summer. In addition, it handles all of our email capabilities. Any interruption in service would shut down multiple county operations. Not having an emergency generator on this critical operation needs to be corrected as soon as possible. And the chilling unit replacements are just as critical. Uh, we have the funding for the study. Uh, once the study comes back, then we'll look at what to do in the next fiscal year. We don't have a price until we get this done. But the committee uh, has looked at that. Uh, we've, you know, we've gotten the information from Steve Cross. Milford's reviewed it. Basically what we would do is part of the reason you need a structural engineer is the generator needs to go on top of the building. The electrical system in here, the wiring in this building was not designed, it was 20 years ago, it wasn't designed for the amount of electrical equipment, computerized equipment we have. So we're going to also have to upgrade some of that. And again, the generator that we have on this building uh, would, will not cover it. So we need to isolate it and have it on a separate generator. And then the chilling units are over 20 something years old. And again, if they go out, we have no means of cooling down that. And y'all can imagine when you've got that much uh, computer equipment, if you don't have the, if you don't have a separate uh, HVAC on that, the heat runs up very quickly. So that's what we're trying to correct there. Those are the five items that the committee uh, is asking for your approval on. Again, as I say at the bottom of the memo, uh, they're continuing to evaluate the existing facilities and we'll have some further recommendations for you at a, in the near future. We did uh, tour two of our facilities. One was the old senior center and the other was the Will Sullivan building. Uh, so the committee has been fully briefed on those and we're trying to make some decisions on what to do there, particularly with the old senior center. Uh, but we'll be back to you later with a recommendation on that. Uh, got three committee members here. Is there anything y'all want to add? Did we cover it? I think every well. I think every well. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's what we've, uh, we've got from the facilities committee. Uh, the next thing I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Parker to deal with, and that's a motion to improve the intent quit claim property and authorize the, the Wayne County Memorial Association to have a curb cut around the Jeffers Building parking lot. <coughs> the, uh, I think there's a, a map on page 130 of your agenda, a drawing, and the uh, property that is uh, there. Right above it, it says grass slash soil area. The uh, easement would be right along there. There is some dispute as to whether the county or the uh, Wayne County Memorial Association owns that that property. Uh, they do not want to make the curb cut now, but they may eventually. Uh, we are running a notice in the uh, newspaper saying that it is that you're considering doing this and you can do it at your next meeting if you adopt this resolution. Any question? So we're not ready to do that today. Then we well, you adopt this resolution today, but then you'd actually give them the easement at your next meeting. Okay. Okay. Now, are we going to do, is this a quick claim or an easement? It's a, a when, quick claim. Claim, but then also give them the authority for the curb cut. Oh, which is the Okay, I'm sorry. Right. Do we need to read this resolution? No. We don't. Okay. Let me next move. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Darden. So it's my understanding there basically is some question in regards to where the lines are, and this is going to straighten up where the lines are. Yes. As far as the property lines. Right. Is that correct? We saw two different surveys. Right. One showed it as ours, one shows it as theirs. We don't really have any need for the property, and if they if they come through with some parking and stuff in the back, it makes sense to have a curb cut there. So we don't have a problem sure. with that. Okay. And that would be all at their cost. Sure. Right. And and 
we don't have any need for the property because all we have there is our parking lot and it's fully designed and in place so there's no reason for us to keep that okay uh, the next thing is budget amendments uh, which Pam will handle and I think you normally just want to do those at the meeting is that right yes man yes sir and uh, that's pretty much the agenda is there anything you need to add Marshall? review at 830 so. right okay. okay 10 o'clock we have our public comment section limited to four minutes then we had the county manager's comments or the commissioner's reports and comments we do need to go into closed session uh, also, I just want to remind everyone that we want to take ample time on everything that we're uh, acting on today or hearing today, but we are on a real tight schedule today. So let's let's take care of business, but let's keep it strictly to business today, please. In other words, hush. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be as politically as correct as I can, Judge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> You forgot me, Marsha. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, how you doing? Yeah. Uh, I can. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, <coughs> this is our annual process. This is by statute. We have to open up our Board of Equalization and review each year. Uh, we have basically can receive appeals on property values from January 1st until the time this board adjourns, which will be the next meeting. So we're going to open this up today. We'll recess it and we'll come back uh, in two weeks for this. And, and Marshall will administer your oaths. Everybody else stand. Okay. Please state your name. I, Joe Dodd, Spain. Do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and maintain the Constitution and laws of the United States. Do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and maintain the Constitution and laws of the United States. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina not inconsistent therewith. And the Constitution and laws of North Carolina are not inconsistent therewith. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office as a member of the Board of Equalization and Review of Wayne County, North Carolina. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of my office as a member of the Board of Equalization and Review of Wayne County, North Carolina. And that I will not allow my actions as a member of the Board of Equalization and Review. And that I will not allow my actions as a member of the Board of Equalization and Review. To be influenced by personal or political friendships or obligations, so help me God. To be, to be influenced by personal or political friendships or obligations, so help me God. Thank you. If you'll sign your oath, I'll take them up. No. <coughs> to convene the ENR you know, board of board now since you're official. Okay. Uh, the board of Equalization and Review is now in session. Uh, Marsha has administered the oath. Uh, convene board of meeting. Uh, 
Ask if anyone here to appeal to a value. This time. If no one, Alan, if you would give the report, please. Yes, sir. Uh, what we have this year, Mr. Chairman, right now we have 27 uh, property owners with 44 parcels of, with under appeal. Um, what we're seeing, Mr. Chairman and the board, we've talked about this every year since 2011. It seems like, um, as we said last year and the year before, we're stuck with our 2011 values. That was our revaluation date. That was our snapshot <coughs> in time. What we're seeing now, again, just like we did last year, people are getting refinancing their homes. They're getting current appraisals. Sometimes these appraisals are coming in less than what our value has it. Well, that's automatic. People think we've got it wrong. That's not the case. We're comparing a 2014 and 15 value to a 2011 value. Our market has slipped some in some categories of homes, especially our upper end homes. We can't adjust those values strictly for economic reasons. So what we're doing, we're reviewing all of these, we're reviewing our square footages, our listings and everything like that. And if we have, if we're going back and checking our sales from 2010, if the sales indicate we have a fair value, we can't adjust those values. And that's mostly what we're seeing right now. It is a hard pill to swallow because this is the first time this has ever happened. In our previous revaluations, as soon as we do a reval, the market keeps going up, up, and up. So tax value is here. Your market's up here when you get an appraisal done, so nobody says anything. Well, it's the reverse this time. Not a big difference, but we have slipped a little bit. So we're going to have to ride this way about the economic roller coaster is like this. We're stuck here with this one until the next time. We do a revaluation, which is 2019. We'll be gearing up for that probably starting in early 2017. It's about almost a two-year process when we do that. So that's sort of what we're seeing right now in a nutshell. We'll be working through these. Uh, we'll actually come back before you next uh, meeting on the 21st. If we have anybody ready at that time that wishes to appear, we'll bring them. If not, we'll adjourn this board of VNR. That basically stops any more appeals being filed for this year because we have to get ready for budgeting and stuff like that. But uh, we, you can hear any appeals <coughs> later on as the board of commissioners also. Okay. Any questions? Any questions for Alan? Do you have a standard letter that you send out explaining all that you just explained to us <laughs> we um we do not but we tell we i've been on wayne with wayne alley on the on the news we've um in our listing every year we put um about our different programs and stuff but we can't spell out what i just said in a in a letter per se but we've been saying the same thing over and over again and we have had articles in the paper where steve's written for us he He's good about keeping people up there in the news Argus, but uh, as far as sending a mass mailing to everybody, no, so we are not. Oh, no, no, no. What I'm speaking of is when someone actually is filing an appeal, I think a standard letter explaining the process would be most helpful because if I was appealing and then all of a sudden I get a letter and understand, well, wait a minute, these are really 2011 values, not current values, and you by law are not allowed to adjust in between the eight-year cycle. I think if you would get a letter like that, I think you would have a lot of people say, well, now I understand it. Some do, but we actually talk to it. Most everybody that comes in and files an informal appeal myself or one well, of our you talk too fast. actually talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. He heard so, what the chairman said. So. There you go. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, you might want to consider correct. the letter. Thank yeah, that, you, that's, chairman. that's a good, good point. We'll, do, we'll look at that. Anyone else? What, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. What is the exception here, though? Uh, would it be in a case like if a residence burned to the ground and it wasn't rebuilt? Yeah, we can make a change, changes during the revaluation time period for any kind of damages such as you're talking about. We can do that. Uh, if there's been damage to the property that's been not fixed as of January 1st, such as termite damage, um, they had a tree fell in the house, anything like that, we can adjust that in between times, yes, sir. Any kind of physical damage we can recognize. It's just not the, e it's the economics we cannot recognize. Mm -hmm. But we do that. Uh, that's pretty obvious. So, you know, we wouldn't be up here before that. But it, it's pretty much a gray area, especially dealing with a commercial property sometimes because you're living in the current period, but yet we have to go back and look at the three years leading up to our revalue. So it's sort of, it is a, it is a double-edged sword, really. And I can understand from a taxpayer standpoint how they would, you know, have to understand this more like Mr. Darty said, maybe a letter explaining this would help a lot maybe. <laughs> Some people you can talk to them, but uh, it, it's, still, it's still hard to swallow when you're, yeah. you're paying on this amount. But again, it, it is an equity thing. If you're in a subdivision and you're appealing your value just because you've got a current revaluation, then you know, I can't go adjust your value and all your neighbors are paying on 2011 values. That, that's where the e equity comes in at. It's, this is an eight-year process. We do it every, all at one time, do the adjustments. So it's, it's an equity thing. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. That it? 
Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. If you'll just recess the okay. board. Uh, do I have a motion that we recess the Board of Equalization and Review so until moved. April 21st? So moved. Have a motion on the floor and discussion. If none, all in favor show a sign of right hand. Motion carries unanimous. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Sir. Okay, do we have time to go in closed session? Yes. Okay. Do I have a I so move motion to go in closed session. Purposes to consider the location of expansion of business in uh, Wayne County and to consult with an attorney uh, to preserve attorney client group. It's a little past nine o'clock. Time to convene the meeting with the Wayne County Board of Commissioners for April the seventh. Uh, would like to remind everyone: if you have cell phones or pagers, please put them on the uh, silent mode, or either cut them off. Mr. Gurley, I think you're going to introduce our yes. uh, Pastor Grimes. Yes, Mr. Chairman. For the invocation this morning, it's my privilege to introduce Reverend Jerry M. Grimes, second. Jerry is the senior pastor of Peter's Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church in Wallace, North Carolina, and he's been in that leadership role since 2010. Jerry's a native of Goldsboro, and he's the husband of Tracy Moore, and Tracy is the assistant district attorney here in Wayne County, and they both reside here in Goldsboro. And also, Jerry's a member of Gateway Board, <laughs> been very instrumental in our Gateway uh, rebranding project. So, Jerry, I ask you to come up if you will, sir. Thank you, and good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, to Chairman Acock, to Vice Chairman Cromarty, to Commissioner Pate, to Commissioner Bell, to my good friends Commissioner Daughtery, Commissioner Mayo, and I would like to thank my good friend Commissioner Gurley for the opportunity to invoke the spirit of our Lord this morning. Let us pray. Eternal and gracious God, we thank you again for the opportunity to spend yet one more day in your glorious creation. And Lord, as we now dwell within these halls of justice and within these walls of diligence and fortitude, Lord, let us always be grateful for the gift of living in a county, in a state, and in a nation where we have freedom and security. And we thank you for our men and women in uniform who are willing, if necessary, to lay down their lives in order to secure our freedom and our security. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless them and their families. And in the same way, we ask that all of the residents of Wayne County would continue to be blessed. We thank you for our leaders, for our commissioners. And we pray now that as we go forth in every way, that you will grant them strength, guidance, and wisdom as they seek to do that which is pleasing in your sight and which is best for the residents of our great county. These things we humbly ask. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and may we all say, Amen. 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 <coughs> Mr. Gurley, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Do I have a motion that we approve the minutes of the March 6th and March 17th meetings? So, so moved, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion on the floor that we approve the minutes of March 6th and March 17th. Any discussion? If none, all in favor show a sign of right hand. Motion carries. Uh, adjustments to the agenda, Mr. Wood. Do we Mr. have any adjustments? Mr. Uh, Chairman, we have two adjustments to the agenda. Uh, prior to doing the, um, I'm sorry, after, right after the appointment committee uh, makes their report, we would like to add an item about the uh, possible sale of property uh, in the industrial park. And the um, second one is, is that under c consent agenda, adding is uh, number eight, uh, an appointment to the um, Thoroughfare Fire Board 
which uh, Marsha had given you previously, I believe. Those are the two changes. <coughs> any other commissioners? Any commissioners have any additions? Okay. If not, uh, we move on. Mr. Wood, if you would take care of the special recognition, please. Yes, I'd like to uh, call on Sheriff Pierce. Uh, he's going to make the presentation. Sheriff. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, I would like to ask uh, uh, Sergeant Jerry Maxwell to come forward this time, please. Uh, Sergeant Maxwell, on behalf of Wayne County citizens and the Sheriff's Office of Wayne County, I'd like to present you with this sidearm that you have protected the citizens with for all these years. And if I may read this from a meritorious service, dedication, loyalty, friendship, and professionalism that you've demonstrated during your career. Your presence will be missed, but your accomplishments will not be forgotten. Thank you so Thank much. You. And I'll ask First Sergeant Darrell Carlisle to please come forward. <clears throat> First Sergeant Carlisle, and for your service, on behalf of Wayne County and the Wayne County Sheriff's Office, I'd like to present you your sidearm for protecting the citizens of Wayne County that you wore for so many years. For meritorious service, dedication, loyalty, friendship, and professionalism that you have demonstrated during your career, your presence will be missed, but your accomplishments will not be forgotten. And we thank you. Thank you. And also, because you've been with Wayne County so long for total years of service, uh, the sheriff's uh, Daryl L. Carlisle from the sheriff's office in appreciation of dedicated service as a county employee, the County of Wayne of North Carolina, 1986 to 2015. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you, gentlemen, for serving Wayne County uh, in several capacities. I mean, really appreciate your your service. Adopt the resolution. Okay. We need to adopt those resolutions. Uh, the first one is on page forty five. Mr. Chairman, I uh, move that we adopt the resolution honoring uh, Jerry D. Maxwell. I have a motion on the floor. Any discussion? I don't know if I ever show a sign of right hand. Motion carries unanimous. And the next one's on page uh, 47. Mr. Chairman, I uh, move that we uh, accept this resolution for Darrell Carlisle. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. And thank you for your service. Okay. Uh, I have a motion on the floor and discussion. All in favor, show a sign of right hand. Motion carries unanimous. Mr. Gurley, appointment committee. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Appointment committee met this morning. The Wayne County Nursing Home Community Advisory Committee has one appointment. The appointment committee would like to recommend Judy Hales for this reappointment. I have a motion on the floor. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor, show a sign of right hand. Motion carries. The Wayne County Public Library Board of Advisors has one appointment. The appointment committee would like to recommend Carol Hayes Artist to this appointment. I'd like to put this in the form of a motion. I have a motion on the floor. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor, show a sign of right hand. Motion carries. And we are considering additional appointments to the Wayne County Agriculture and Convention Center Committee, the Wayne County Planning Board, the Community Child Fatality Prevention Team, Wayne County Latino Council, Wayne County Transportation Committee, Fremont Planning Board, Goldsboro Planning Commission, Wayne County Board of Health, Wayne County Farmers Relief Fund Board of Trustees, Wayne County Juvenile Crime Prevention Council, Wayne Executive Jet Port Advisory Committee, 
Wayne Health Corporation Board of Directors. Thanks for the upcoming year. Thank you, Mr. Gurley, and thank you for the <coughs> to the appointment committee for uh, working on getting capable and qualified people on our, our committees. Uh, they, sometimes they're overlooked. They are vital to Wayne County, but sometimes that we are uh, kind of take them for granted. But we do appreciate everyone that serves on any of our committees that's appointed. Is that for appointment committee? That's that concludes. Mr. Wood, if you would uh, take care of the uh, addition uh, okay. of the sale of property in the industrial park. Okay. As y'all know, we have a, um, a speculative building in the Mount Olive Industrial Park. Uh, and for those in the audience who are not familiar with that term, it's basically uh, a building. It's, it's unfinished, so someone would have to come in and uh, put the flooring in and uh, upgrades for the uh, electrical system and that sort of thing. So it's, it's some people call it a shell building or a speculative building. Uh, this property is located on 10.22 um, acres in the industrial park. Uh, it's right in front of where uh, Highway 55 has their uh, headquarters. For some time now, uh, the Mount Olive Pickle Company has been looking for uh, additional space for warehousing. Uh, we have been working with them, we being the WCDA uh, and my office, and uh, we have uh, been working with them. As y'all know, they're a great corporate citizen here in Wayne County, have been since 1926. Um, we have uh, negotiated with them and uh, I'm happy to report that uh, our recommendation to you today is that we sell the uh, speculative building to the Mount Olive Pickle Company for $650,000. Uh, you have a written offer from them for that. Uh, that would be for the 10.22 acres and the building. Uh, it's a 55,000 uh, square foot building uh, they would have to uh, put about $900,000 more into the building to make it fully operational for them. Uh, but uh, we think this is a, a good business move for both the county and for Mount Olive Pickle, uh, and we're delighted to be able to help uh, one of our better corporate citizens uh, and also to remain in Wayne County and, uh, and also to put this building on the tax roll. So with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, the recommendation from the WCDA uh, Executive Board, uh, uh, the Director, Crystal Geddes, uh, and myself, uh, we're recommending that you accept this offer for $650,000 from the Mount Olive Pickle Company. Mr. Chairman. Just a minute, Mr. Any, anyone else have any questions for Mr. Wood? If not, Mr. Camardi, if you would. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I move to have a private sale of the Mount Olive Shell Building on property described in deed book 2450 at page 725 in the Wayne County Registry to Mount Olive Pickle Company, Inc. for $650,000. This sale is subject to NCGS 160A-267 and the Mount Olive Industrial Park Declaration of Covenants, Conditions, and Restrictions. And I put that in form of a motion. I have a motion on the floor. Any discussion or questions? Mr. Darden. <laughs> I barely <laughs> raised my finger. Um, uh, Council, I, I need to ask you in regards to are we covering ourselves in regards to the development of the covenants that we are going to be uh, inserting into the uh, deed when it's transferred. I think as a separate motion, you would authorize the uh, manager okay. and WCDA to uh, provide, provide covenants and get them. Could I ask that we amend the motion to go ahead and include uh, what the council has just stated? <laughs> as well as to authorize the chairman to sign the deed and the covenants. Okay. So we would need to include in our motion that we authorize uh, the council as well as 
the county manager and uh, the president of WCDA to negotiate the restrictive covenants to be included in the deed when it's transferred. And to authorize the county manager to, to, to who to sign the chairman. I'm chairman. sorry, chairman. the chairman to sign the deed transferring this uh, this property over. <laughs> Thank you. Would that be okay if we add that as a friendly amendment? I accept that as a friendly amendment with Thank you. enthusiasm. Okay. Yes. <laughs> we got it worded right, Mr. Parker. Yes, Ms. Wilson, you've got, got all of it. I have a motion on the floor, if no other discussion. All in favor of the sale of the uh, Shell building in Mount Olive to Mount Olive Pickle Company. Uh, all in favor, show sure sign of right hand. Motion carries unanimous. Unfinished business, Mr. Wood, if you would. Yes. Uh, we have uh, the architects with us today from Mosley Architects, um, and uh, they're here to give you an update on the satellite jail and uh, to tell you about next steps on it. So, uh, Dan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm Dan Wood. Uh, Make sure you speak clearly into the mic, and, and if you would, just state your name before you get started, please. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Dan Mace with Mosley Architects, Vice President. And uh, on behalf of Mosley Architects, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the uh, Board of Commissioners, Mr. Manager, we appreciate the opportunity to update you today on our progress with the satellite jail uh, facility on William Road. Um, I'm going to turn it over for most of the details to our project manager, Jason Hopkins. But before I started, I wanted to uh, send my regards. Todd Davis uh, wanted me to uh, say hello. He wanted to be here today to discuss some, some of the staffing he's been working on. But unfortunately, he had a bad fall uh, last weekend and had to have surgery done on his knee. So he's immobilized right now. So he did want to apologize for not being here today to update you on the staffing implications of the, of the project. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Jason Hopkins to bring you up to speed on the status of our, our contract documents. Thank you. Uh, once again, I'm Jason Hopkins with Mosley Architects, and I'm going to update you on where we are in the design process, moving towards bidding and eventually construction. Okay, um, our bidding documents, which are basically the plans and specifications, are at about a 98% completion level at this point. The site approvals are currently being finalized. In terms of what we presented last time at the design development level for the site, the site has been mirrored, essentially, the placement of the building on the site, uh, avoiding what we felt was an undesirable proximity to a convenience store. So the building is more internal to the site. The site layout is a lot more functional as a result. Next slide, please. In terms of the floor plan, uh, we have added additional square footage in order to satisfy requirements from the Department of Health and Human Services. It's about uh, 1,500 additional square feet that is spread out over the housing units. Um, as a result of that, we, were, we had enough room to go to move to a single bunk configuration so that there's a single bunk on the floor instead of bunk beds stacked. In an indirect supervision environment where you have officers in a control room trying to monitor inmates, it's, it's much better to have single bunking in terms of visibility, sight lines. It drastically improves, in my opinion anyway, the safety and security of the facility. Um, we also added an additional cell in the housing unit that has the cells in it. That brings our total bed count up to 221. Question, what, yes, what's sir? the rule from Health and Human Services that required this? Excuse me? What was the, the reason again that you went to the single bunk? Uh, well, we weren't required to go to a single bunk. We were required to add additional square okay, footage. That's why I guess that was my question. Okay. There's, there's a standard square footage per inmate okay. and how, okay. you, how you count it inside of a day room. Okay. Thank okay. you. Um, next, next slide, please. And you can, you can scroll on through. These are just kind of uh, detailed uh, construction documents, uh, elevations. And halt there for one second, please. So, so currently, um, our we have an internal quality control uh, procedure. We call it ReadyCheck, 
that has been complete and those comments have been returned to us and we're working on uh, finishing incorporating them into the drawings. Uh, we are currently in final review with the following entities. The Department of Insurance in North Carolina, which did, they performed a design development review. Uh, we responded to those comments. They are now only doing kind of a cursory final review because the city of Goldsboro is going to be the primary reviewing entity as opposed to the Department of Insurance. Um, they will be the entity issuing the building permits for the project. Uh, Department of Health and Human Services, uh, we have already received their final architectural comments and it's been approved for bidding. We're only awaiting their engineering review comments. And of course the Wayne County stakeholders, uh, the, the drawings have been submitted and specifications to facilities and the Sheriff's Department for also for their final review, anything they, any final comments they may have on the project. Uh, next slide please. Uh, our final cost estimate came in about a week ago, and this is where we currently stand uh, on the cost of the facility. This is just an estimate of probable cost at $8.6 million. This is an increase over the design development phase cost estimate, uh, which I attribute to additional square footage being added to satisfy those uh, DHSR requirements. Uh, we went to, we have some added detention equipment costs in the facility from going from double bunking to single bunking. There, there are more dividers. It's a more complex thing to do from a detention equipment standpoint. And the, all of the showers in the facility have been converted to be modular uh, steel cell type showers uh, to match the, the cell construction that we're putting in. This, all facilities have problems with showers. This will make these showers last uh, as long, you know, as long as the facility does. So. In terms of schedule, uh, looking at, you know, we're kind of at the mercy as usual with our reviewing authorities and the timely, um, how, how quickly they turn around the comments and provide us with input. Um, because we did go through design development reviews, you know, I feel confident that when the comments come in, it really only takes about a week to incorporate those comments and turn it around. So looking at a worst case scenario, I think we will have all of our comments back by April 24th, hopefully sooner. Uh, that's two and a half weeks from now, basically, but I do not anticipate it will take that long. So looking at that as a worst case, we could move into advertising the project for bidders by May 3rd to play advertise on Sundays and looking at an, a bid opening at the end of May, uh, May 28th or possibly June 2nd. We anticipate approximately 12 month construction duration for the project, putting substantial completion somewhere July, August time frame 2016. Uh, that, that concludes my update of our progress. Mr. Mayor, I have a question on the single bunking. Yes, sir. That you went to. Mm -hmm. it, it, can uh, or can we at some point if we need to go to double bunking? Or well, you have you, enough space for that? Yes, sir. I mean, the single bunks take up more floor space than the double bunks. Uh, so you can go to double bunking. The only problem is you're maxed out on capacity. By this, per the standards, you can only have 64 inmates in one dormitory, right. and that's a new that's newly allowed in, in North Carolina. And, and this really a safety issue. You wouldn't want more than 64 inmates, and this is, you know, in one open dormitory setting, and this is how the standards define. But if we want to take just a few of those and make them double bunks, we could do, we have, we're not out of regulation if we do you, that. Sir, you cannot exceed 64 inmates. Okay. Right now, you have bunks for 64 inmates in each dormitory. It's completely maxed out. That's true. Mr. Uh, Payton. Does this um, total base bid estimate, does that include, is this just the building itself, facility? Does it include the land prep and the demolition? It includes demolition and land prep. Okay. Uh, including demolition in this cost also caused it to increase. We weren't showing that demolition cost. It just wasn't in what I'm looking at. That's why I asked yes, the question. Yeah, this is really the last page of it. Uh, you know, the, the actual detailed estimate is, you know, about 10 pages broken down per division of construction and site work. So it does include that. It also includes a contingency factor for cost escalation from now to when construction would start, you know, into second quarter of about $130,000. Mr. Mr. Doherty. <clears throat> the only question that I have received from the public uh, actually came from 
an attorney on which they are concerned that there would be a separate room for interviewing with their client that would be private, and that has been accommodated. Yeah, yes, sir. There, there are attorney, um, attorney inmate interview, bo interview booths there, um, at the main entrance to the facility. So the attorney can come in through the main lobby. The inmate can come in through the secure side, and they can have a non-contact visitation through glass where they are not allowed to pass anything concerned about the introduction of contraband. However, if that is not sufficient, there is another space in the building allocated, the multi-purpose rooms for each housing unit, where an attorney can meet with their client face-to-face -face in a contact environment. Can I follow up on that, <clears throat> Mr. Page? They'd also allow them, if they wanted to, from their uh, office and wherever they are in town, actually go online and talk to the client that way, or say they have to go actually go to the conference. facility. Talk about video conference. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't think, I mean, for the most part, the video visitation that we have set up is not completely, it's not private. You know, in, in each housing unit, an inmate would sit there in front of a screen. Everyone, you know, they're not in a room separated from everyone else. There's a chance to overhear what they're saying. I, I don't imagine many attorneys would want to would want to use that option. Well, I'm a second for convenience purposes. They may just want to do that on occasion as opposed to having to drive to the facility. Well, it can't be done from outside the facility. The video the visitation we have set up is, is from the lobby to the housing unit. It's an okay. internal network. It's not exterior. Okay. Thank you. Well, could I follow up on that? <clears throat> I thought that, that when we visited that actually they did have the capability of having uh, off-site visitation for the payment of a fee. So even if I was a family member in Colorado and I wanted to have some... <coughs> visitation with my family member mm -hmm. that that is possible is that correct it, it is possible um, that's kind of an emerging technology and well, that's not something we're incorporating in the facility it's it's a very new technology that off-site visitation but of course it's definitely possible with uh, with internet and I guess encrypted but with, with the equipment that we are uh, purchasing and putting in here is that capable maybe the sheriff can address that is it is that capable for us to have that in the future? I think our vendor, I think our vendor detail may be sure, sure. Sheriff, if you would come up to the mic, please. Be all up for sure. If I can do it, I don't know for sure if they can do it. They just have to look. It could. Okay. We have a vendor in the jail, Paytail, that mm -hmm. does our uh, telephone service for inmates. That is a potential movement toward that if at some point, I, but I have not uh, discussed that in depth with them, but it is available. Would, would you possibly reach out to them and make sure that the equipment that we are purchasing would be compatible for them, and actually, if at all possible? I, I will, and actually it's their equipment that they put in. Okay. <laughs> it's not, if, they, if oh, okay. I'm correct in saying that. They actually put the equipment in, and they make a percentage off of it. So they furnish the equipment. I think, Mr. Chairman, the, the, the important thing here is to make sure that the infrastructure is robust the enough to take care of any and future needs. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the, the equipment can be swapped out as right. they upgrade it. You know, as long as there's a power line and a data line, that's right. You know, we okay. all that's covered. All right. All right. <laughs> Jason, I think one of the main things is with the design that y'all are presenting to us meets all local, state, and federal requirements. Yes, sir. That's that's why it's in our in final review. Okay, and this it will is, not be approved unless it unless it does. And this is a jail. This is not a Holiday Inn. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm getting old. <laughs> it takes me a time to get back to the question I had on the demolition. Uh, there was. And also site prep. It was my understanding that we are actually going to have to be bringing in a good bit of field to raise the elevation. Is yes, that sir. Correct? Are we actually uh, using the the old building to actually use as a field? There has been some discussion about that, about actually grinding, you know, some of the demolition waste and trying to use that as fill. Our civil engineer thinks it can be accomplished. Well, rather than us ha having to haul it all the way out to the landfill, Agreed. it would be great for us to be able to use that. Yeah, absolutely. We agree. Okay. 
Thank you, That's Mr. also Chair. why we held off at doing it as a separate contract. Jason's advice was let's incorporate it into the, the contract here because of that. Uh, and, and that's a good point. I was at a facility the other day that had a ribbon cutting, and uh, they had demolished several buildings. And, and they, 80, I forgot the exact figure, was 80 some percent of the material that was in the old buildings were, was recycled. So I, that was, you know, if the private sector can do it, I don't see the reason why we can't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, by having a demolition contract, the private sector will be involved in it, and of course they'll make their decision about it. <coughs> where they can take the various uh, steel beams and things like that. And then if we're able to, to use this, they'll just bring somebody on site, grind it up, and then we'll have it right on site. Thank you. Anyone else? See, I'm being briefed today. Okay. Mr. Doctor, I checked with uh, Major Greenfield, and they do have a way now for lawyers to be in the courthouse interviewing their clients. Mm -hmm. so that, that's already, that was something Judge Jones wanted. Okay. Actually, I think that was the question for the question. question. <laughs> All right, Mr. Wood. Okay. Any other comments on this? No, I'd just like to say we're pleased with it. I think they've expedited it like we requested. As y'all probably know, uh, just going through the permitting process is, is a time consuming a process and as you heard him say there's multiple agencies that have to say grace over this thing uh, I think they've done a good job of bringing it in close to our figure uh, when you, the only thing missing is uh, their fee and a few other minor things and uh, then we get into the 10 million ballpark and I think when we all started if we uh, uh, if you had said we could get out of this issue for 10 million dollars I think we would have just said thank you uh, because I think it, when we first started, we were thinking we had to have a traditional type jail instead of the misdemeanor. So uh, I think this is a good solution to our problem. Uh, they've laid it out to where this building will connect to a future jail, which would be a more traditional uh, jail for uh, uh, more serious offenders. So uh, I think we're off to a good start on it. I just want to say thank you. Y'all have done a good job. Thanks. And just and one more thing, you know, this is in the city limits, and so, you know, we're basically having to go by what the city codes and ordinances are, but I think we've proven in the past how we can work with the city, That's right. and, uh, and and I feel confident that the city's going to work with us on this. Yeah. <laughs> Good comment. And they're very <laughs> pleased that uh, we're cleaning up that particular site, obviously. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anyone else? I just need to ask a question. Did you all yes, build a jail over at uh, Haunted County? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Sure, if you got any comments. Oh, okay. That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Have you or any of your staff got any comments? Uh, just like to thank Mother again for their work and the consideration that y'all are making. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, if that's it, we appreciate Dan, you and Jason thank you. being here today. and. We want to be cautious, but we want to move as quick as we can. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat>
What's the pleasure of the board? Motion to approve architectural selection for 911 Center and authorizing the county manager to uh, negotiate a contract. So moved, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion on the floor. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor, show sign of right hand. Motion carries unanimous. Wayne County Facilities Committee recommendation. Mr. Chairman, you have the uh, memo in the packet, which I went over with you at the 8 o'clock meeting. Uh, there are five items that the Facilities Committee is asking you all to approve. Uh, just to briefly uh, go back over them, we need to replace the roof at the Farm Services Building. Uh, Milford has an estimated cost of $97,450 for that. We do have funds in his uh, facilities maintenance budget for it, and we'd like to do that this year. So we'd like to get that one underway. The second one is we need to replace the leaking roof at the Dudley EMS, EMS station. Uh, the current one is a flat roof and we want to replace it with an A-frame roof so that we have uh, elevation and we'll shed the rain better. Uh, we want to do it with using in-house labor and so the only thing we need is the um, materials and Milford has estimated that at about 13000 and again, he has the money in his facilities maintenance budget this year, and we'd like to move forward with that one immediately. Uh, the number three is to demolish the old facilities services office building that's located in the parking lot of the health department. Uh, the building's in poor condition and sits over the drainage system for the parking lot, as we talked about uh, this morning. Uh, we need to fix that drainage system because uh, if it overflows the parking lot, there's only about a four or five inch curb, and after that, uh, it goes down <coughs> some steps and into the uh, health department's back door. So we need to correct that issue. Number four is we want to demolish the vacant child services coordinator building near the health department facing Ash Street. Uh, it's in very bad shape and it needs to be removed. Uh, this would also free up space for any additional building or parking we may need as we look at the health department's expansion. And number five is to authorize a request for qualifications to hire an electrical, mechanical, and structural engineering firm to evaluate and design a backup generator and replacement chiller units for the county's data center, which is located in the courthouse annex. We cannot afford to lose power to this facility as the computer equipment will overheat. In addition, it handles all of our email capabilities. Any interruption in service would shut down multiple county operations. Not having an emergency generator on this critical operation needs to be corrected as soon as possible. And the chilling unit replacements are just as critical. Uh, again, we have the funding in the current budget to conduct this study. Uh, we do not have the funds in the current budget to perform the actual construction, but once we get an estimate on that after the engineers complete their study, uh, then we would move forward with that. And those are the five recommendations from the facilities committee. Any questions for Mr. Wood? I have one on item number three mm -hmm. uh, the old facility service building when it's demolished. Uh, if the time frame fits, could any of that be you fulfilled for the jail? I mean, if the time frame. Yeah. I mean, if. We can certainly look at it. Because if nothing more, if we determine that we're going to use the other for fill and we're going to grind it, then we could just uh, stockpile it over there and we'd get with the architect to make sure we, we put it in a place out of out of the way so that we don't interfere. Well, I mean, it's, 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 it's a win-win because. It is. It, it's it, a fairly it'll substantial be building. In, plus, it'll be that much that we keep out of the, the uh, landfill. That's right. That's right. Anyone else? If no other questions. Uh, do I have a first pleasure to board? I have a motion on the floor. We approve uh, facilities committee recommendation. Uh, Milford, do you have any any comments you want to make before we vote on this? Um, Mr. I'd like to thank y'all for uh, seeing the benefits of what we're trying to do and uh, we'll keep coming up with ideas, keep coming up with money. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs>
Now you could have gone all day with that. <laughs> okay, I uh, have no other comments or questions. I'll have a motion on the floor. All in favor, show sign of right hand. Motion carries unanimous. Okay. On the next item, uh, this is a motion to approve intent to quit claim property and authorize the Wayne County Memorial Association to have a curb cut around the Jeffries Building parking lot. Uh, as we said earlier, this is a, a small piece of property that's in dispute. We have one survey that shows the county owns it. We have another survey that shows that the Memorial Association owns it. Uh, we've met with them over it. Uh, the county has no need for this property. Uh, the only use we have would be in the parking lot. There's no need to add to the parking lot. It's not a big enough piece of property to add anything. We couldn't get another parking place or anything. So we really have no need for the property. Uh, it would benefit them. In addition to that, in talking with them, they expressed that at some point as they develop some parking in the rear of their building, they may want to have a curb cut where they could access an exit through our parking lot, which we would have no problem with. It would be a very minimal amount of vehicles. So that's why we put the part in there about having a curb cut in the future, uh, which would cut into or could tie into rather our uh, parking lot at the Jeffers building. So we would have a quick claim deed for the property and then give them an easement for a curb cut into our parking lot. That's correct. Okay, do we need to read this resolution? So. Uh, okay. All right. I do have a comment though. Uh, Just as talking with those people with with you and, and what this was all about, it really does fit future plans for this memorial association and supported by veterans. So that's right. When, when it's time to, to vote on this, and I'm going to let make motion read the resolution. Thank you. Okay. What's the pleasure to board? Mr. Chairman, I move that uh, we adopt the resolution uh, to approve the intent to quick claim the property and authorize the Wayne County Memorial Association to have a curb cut around the Jeffries Building parking lot. Do you say there's, there's no need to read the resolution? Or? I wouldn't think so. Okay. Okay. All right. I have a motion on the floor. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor, show sign of right hand. Motion carries now. Budget amendments. Ms. Pam. I tell you, we're clipping right along here. You need to remind me again to keep my mouth shut. I will. <laughs> <laughs> well, we haven't got the phone hold up. <laughs> uh, okay, we'll begin today with budget amendment number 355. Um, we have several for the Sheriff's Department. Would you like for me to call them all out at one time? Yeah, that would be fine. Okay. Number 355 is for $63.85 and is to appropriate seized property funds received by the Sheriff's Department. Number 357 is $13,000. They need to transfer funds from gas, oil, and tires and ammunition to training and travel. Um, that is not increasing their budget, it's just moving some line items around. Number 358, to appropriate funds for fingerprinting concealed permit with concealed, concealed permit position with concealed weapon restricted funds, $9,914. 364 is to appropriate funds for overtime for officers assigned to the wings over Wayne. And number 375 is $625 to appropriate controlled substance funds received. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman, 355, 357, 358, 364, and 395. 375. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it looks like a nine in the It does to me, too. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> okay, I have a motion on the floor that we approve budget amendment 355, 357, 358, 364, and 375. Uh, any questions or discussion? I'm concerned about that overtime for the, for wings over wing. It's just amazing that uh, our overtime would uh, would be that amount. 
they they want. And Larry, where's he, he did leave. I think it's 40 officers for two days, so it's a considerable investment. It is. <laughs> well, I saw that too. I, I assumed that the city of Goldsboro is going to have their police officers. Oh yeah, everybody's going to be there. It's 150,000 people. We're all going to be at that. Okay, I thought so. Okay, thank you, Mr. But I, I feel like the, the, the attendance that they're expecting will outweigh yeah. uh, a lot of our expenses. Uh, I mean, it's going to be, it's going to bring a lot of, a lot of tourism money in that can right. be funneled to the new agricultural convention center. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I have a motion on the floor. All in favor, sure sign of writing. Motion carries you now. Um, your next budget amendment is for the sewer fund. It's $120,000 to appropriate funds for Goldsboro wastewater treatment plant charges. Um, our charges are running a little more than we didn't budget for in the original budget. We did have in our original budget a debt service payment, and so um, we have not used any of the money from the eastern region in the sewer fund as of yet, so we're paying that debt payment out of the general fund, so I'm able to reduce that line item and increase the user fees. Um, I know y'all want to know, well, why do we need more money? Um, at this um, time, we are $20,420.88 short. That means that we are paying that much more to the city of Goldsboro than we're billing out. So we have had a rainy winter yeah. and some of those problems we're working on now. That's right. And if you remember earlier in the year, we had not corrected all those problems. And so that's when we racked up quite a few charges there. And we, we are addressing and reviewing our rate structure for the upcoming budget. Yeah, we'll be doing that as part of the budget. As I have a month-by-month -month <coughs> analysis here, and we can tell that the, the change, it is changing for the better. And can we ask um, maybe Milford staff to provide us a chart of the last 18 months to see how the I&I &I was reduced when mm -hmm. that line was mm -hmm. repaired? Mm -hmm. I think that would be helpful. It would be. Pleasure to board on Budget Amendment 363. Motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion on the floor. We approve Budget Amendment 363. Any other discussion? <coughs> Not all in favor, share sign of right hand. Motion carries you now. Our next budget amendment is for the E911 board fund. It's $7,890.71. Is this, this is to transfer funds to the general fund for the um, fund balance that has been approved by the 911 board. Over the years, um, they'll either say, well, you can't, we'll have an expenditure charged in there and they won't um, approve that. And so it's kind of um, been staying in that fund. So now what we have done is we have balanced the fund balance report with the audit report and getting them in line. Even though we're in our audit, we have a reconciliation between the two. We are moving the funds back to the general fund so that now our audit and the report will balance as of June 30th, 2014. So that's $7,890.71 to get those both in line. Pleasure to board. Move to approve, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion on the floor. We approve a budget amendment number 365. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor, show sign of right hand. Motion carries unanimously. Number 366 is for the 4 H department. It is $12,687.58. It's to reallocate children, youth, and families at risk grant funds to different line items. All they're doing is trying to spend their grant money and they can't spend them in the line items that we had them in and move into other line items that they could spend it in. It's all grant funds. Motion to approve. Uh, motion on the floor. I got 366. Yes, sir. Uh, I have a motion on the floor. We approve budget amendment 366 and discussion. No discussion. All in favor, <coughs> side of right hand. Motion carries you now. Number 367 is for social services to appropriate additional funds awarded to DSS by Duke Energy Progress, $1,865.46. Motion approved, Mr. Chairman, 367. I have a motion on the floor. We approve budget amendment 367. Any discussion? <coughs> no discussion. All in favor, show sign of right hand. Motion carries unanimous. Number 374 is for the landfill, $35,000. 
to replace the undercarriage on the D7. It was originally budgeted, but the funds were transferred out to help with the truck purchase that they just made. Pleasure to board. Motion to approve, Mr. Chair. I have a motion on the floor. We approve budget amendment 374. Any discussion? No discussion. All in favor should sign it right. Oh. Motion carries unanimous. And then our I last. I thought you were going to speak, Mr. Kerr. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Our last budget amendment is number 397. It's for the city of Goldsboro. It's $8,000 to appropriate funds for the city of Goldsboro Parks and Recreation Department. Mr. Chairman, motion to approve. I have a motion on the floor. We approve budget amendment 397. Uh, any discussion? If no discussion. All in favor show sign of right hand. Motion carries unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hope. One hour. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, after we have uh, public comments, if we could, I'd like to recommend that we move the closed session up because we have some folks from out of town we're asking to be in that. Okay. Okay. Are we close enough for public comments? All right, let's go. It's uh, 10 o'clock, time for our public comment session. Uh, if anyone has any public comments, uh, please come forward, state your name, address, and phone number, and uh, you are allowed four minutes. I'm Ed Wilson, uh, 3102 Casewell Drive, Unit 37, 919-778-2360. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I come here with a great deal of pride in my county commissioners and our city council for your working together as you have in the past months. You've done a wonderful job of doing things to improve our economy and the quality of life in, in this community. Number one, the Advanced Manufacturing Center. You provided a state-of-the-art training facility, which I believe will encourage more people to move toward those careers like STEM programs that will get more folks into better paying jobs. It'll also be a resource for economic development because we will have a facility, training facility, that will put us way ahead of many other communities in our state. It will also uh, allow more space at Wayne Community College for newer programs. Moving forward with the Ag Center, for many years, our community has needed a facility similar to that to handle large meetings, trade shows, and it will bring more people into our community in order they will spend money here. Uh, in Wayne County and assisting the city with the sports complex that will attract a large number of people my grandson has been playing soccer down in Myrtle Beach at that facility and I can tell you that people go from long distances to go watch these folks play and so they'll be spending money in our community also we'll have a BRAC coming up uh, in the near future and that shows the cooperation between the city, county, and our Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. This cooperation, in my opinion, is unprecedented in my time in Wayne County, and I encourage you to continue. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Wilson, for the kind comments. Anyone else? Heard you say, uh, state it, Mr. Tom Drew, P.O. Box 587, Goldsburg, North Carolina, 27533. Heard you speak, uh, people spend money in Wayne County. When they come in from outside the community. Yes, you used the word spend. Did you mean invest? I'm talking about spending money. Well, when people come for a bit. Money spent, it's gone. When you invest, you got something to do for it. <laughs> okay, I just want to make sure what I heard. Tom, um, so nice to see you. <laughs> okay. Good morning, fellow pioneers of the last frontier between the years. May we progress in resolving the arms race in inner space rather than outer space. 
And uh, I know when I come up here, y'all's blood pressure goes through the floor. I feel like I need to provide you some emergency first aid, and that's humor. I would have brought my rubber chicken with me, but I'm cooking up some rubber chicken soup for the soul for the Board of Education. But I do have a rubber, I got a why the chicken cross the road joke, which Dr. Daughtry is known as one who is or seeks to be the <laughs> expert on why the chicken cross the road joke. So when y'all go to Hawaii or wherever for your next meeting with other commissioners, you have something to take with you, original Wayne County one. The question is, why did the rubber chicken run across the road? To get away from that rubber snake. When he got there, what did he say? He said, there's rubber snakes and there's rubber snakes. He said, that was a rubber chicken snake. That's original. Uh, Skype, Skype, Skype. I thought y'all would show them the Board of Education how it could be done and done right. I come in here, be all Skypes. See y'all smiles five times as large. And the next time the citizens see you, <coughs> instead of shaking their head, they'd be shaking your hand for the insight that you provided by Skype. Article a few weeks ago, parade, uh, Growing Good Citizens. I'd reword it, Growing Great Citizens in Wayne County and asking not what Wayne County can do for you, ask what you can do with Wayne County to advance ideas for the benefit of humankind by public comment. Brings to mind Einstein. FS plus PA equals D secures our ability to secure democracy's most valuable resource, a free educated mind to solve all problems, from any mind near or far. And that is greater than the equation E equals MC squared. Einstein said, politics is for the moment, equations are for eternity. Equal MC squared secures or advances the ability to tap the power of the atom. FS plus PA equals D is a political equation to secure democracy for eternity by enabling all minds to solve all problems, especially the problems that E equals MC squared has and continues to make. 30 seconds before smiles go, when I come in, I saw the sheriff. First, I thought he was the county manager. They had similar smiles. Uh, time up. Till Board of Education meeting. They postponed for a couple weeks. Thank you, Mr. Drew, for your Where I left off. Bye bye. Anyone else? Bob Jackson, 109 Aurora Lane, Goldsboro. I'll only take a minute. I'm sure that when most people stand here, they're wanting something. Today, I, I think it's my duty to tell you what a great job you're doing. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have not uh, seen a board like this in a long time that's worked together. Uh, most of your votes are 7-0. Uh, you're doing some great things for Wayne County. I don't know how we could have got a better mix than we have. And I want you to know that the comments I hear from the people in Wayne County are the same as what I'm saying now, that you're doing a great job. We're glad to have you on our board, uh, the things you're doing, uh, the progress we're making. It, it seems that you're doing some great things. Um, before long, you'll have a budget to discuss and to massage and work with. And, uh, See if you can um, uh, continue to do what you've been doing with the budget uh, to help the people in Wayne County. Uh, just thought I should tell you that we feel like you're doing a great job. Just keep it up. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. 
Mr. Chairman, we might want to ask him to continue in regards to, you know, the accolades. We appreciate that. We don't want to cut you short. <laughs> is, is there anyone else to have any comments? If no one else has comments, I will. Uh, public comment session is closed. Uh, thank you for your attendance and thank you for your comments. You want, to, you want to go into closed session yes, now or you want to? I'd, I'd like to go into closed session because we've got some folks from out of town. We need to let them come in with you a few minutes and then we can let them go. Pleasure to board. I move we go into closed session. I'm going to stop with an attorney to preserve attorney client privilege. Commissioners back in session. Uh, next item is county manager's comments. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just a few things. Uh, first is uh, we received a resignation uh, last week from uh, Teresa Barrett, who heads the day reporting center. So we will be uh, advertising for that. In the interim, uh, we have appointed the um, assistant, the administrative assistant over there to run it. So I uh, just wanted to inform you all of that. Uh, we, uh, of course, continue, the main thing we're doing now is continuing to work on the budget. Uh, we're now in the process of meeting with the various department heads. Uh, we started that uh, last week and are moving forward this week with that as well. Um, uh, we obviously are still continuing to work uh, quite a bit on all of these various construction projects. Uh, we've spent some time working on the uh, Ag Center, uh, also uh, uh, with Mr. Bass on the uh, jail. And of course, uh, then we went through the architect selection process on the 911. So uh, all of those have uh, taken quite a bit of time as well. But uh, our primary focus right now is on the budget and the capital improvements program for next year. So. Uh, if any of you have any questions on that uh, or that process, I'll be happy to talk with you individually on that. That's all I have. Okay. Uh, commissioner's comments, uh, Mr. Bell. Uh, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> bring a little update on uh, East Point. East Point is still in the process of trying to uh, <coughs> acquire some additional counties to uh, expand. And it looked like to me right now it's sort of on a halfway standstill. They can't find anybody that wants to uh, do what need to be done. So I don't know how that's going to fall out. I uh, met with the Board of Election and very shocked to know that uh, there's been a change over there. Uh, but uh, they're, they're still going to need the equipment that to update the county as far as the new equipment that they're going to need over the next year or so. Uh, met with the Latino Council and they're in the process of developing a countywide system where all of the <clears throat> non-English speaking Latinos will be able to access, uh, you know, gateway or social service or whatever the case may be, library and all these kinds of let them know of where these places are located, <coughs> uh, landfill and all this stuff. So uh, no, no action needed on my comment. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Mr. Gurley? Over the past couple of weeks, I've attended a couple of meetings at the board directors of the hospital, and one of them was a meeting with the Halley Group to talk about the invitation of some of the government rep recommendations regarding the Wayne Health physicians. And um, this meeting was well attended and well received by the board. And as many of y'all, did I attended the We Dig It days at the J.R. Odom Farm, and um, there's well attended by our second graders throughout the school system, a lot of genuine information throughout the workstation, and some of these workstations information kids got to experience would never get to probably uh, in their lifetime, so it's a great opportunity to get out and see it. And as you saw in your gate, gateway information day, and consent agenda to our report, and I'm pleased with the work of the Gateway Board and Mr. Fontana and the staff and 
they've proven to be a more efficient performance of gateway. <coughs> Thank you. Mr. Payne. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, that's sort of a tight schedule because I've been doing some remodeling myself at home, so I missed a few things. But I did attend some, uh, a number of events. Uh, on the 18th, uh, with the Travel Tourism Board, and probably the largest topic that we discussed was the um, Agricultural Convention Center, and they are solid behind this uh, initiative. They are truly excited, and Betsy's ready to move out there tomorrow. <laughs> um, we had Wayne Transportation and the seven quarter, and I'll let Mr. Dollar talk more about that because that's sort of his thing. Um, Ray and I both went, we were on WGBR, and of course, what we discussed, Ag Center and Convention Center. So what else will we discuss? And um, Commissioner Bell forgot to mention, he um, gave, read the resolution for the Vietnam Veterans Day. You know, I had to be somewhere else, but I was there <coughs> quick enough to get there to get see him do that, and I appreciate you doing that for me and the vets as well. And um, I went to the We Dig It, so I won't, he covered that well, so I won't go over it. But something I really enjoyed last Thursday evening, I was invited to sit on a panel to see the senior projects for the kids from the School of Engineering at Goldsboro High School. And I'll tell you, we, we got a great picture of these kids. And there was one guy who wants to be, a, you know, go into physics, get his doctorate, and he's about ready. And when I we got ready to leave, I talked to his instructor. I said, that kid talked over me. He said, he does that to me all the time. So, so don't be all bad. So, but I was really impressed by those kids, and they've got a clear and bright future, and I, I'll be glad to do that again. I really enjoyed it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Mr. Pay Mr. Mayor. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I was uh, attended. The, uh, on the 19th of the RPO meeting in Mount Olive, of course, uh, Commissioner Daughtery is on that board too. And we, uh, the election of officers uh, was Connie Price. Our, of course, everybody knows him, my director, planning director here in Wayne County. He was elected chairman. And uh, Chris Robertson, who's vice chair, uh, was elected from Kingsville, from the town of Kingsville. Patrick Riddle uh, presented an overview of the governor's 25-year vision for North Carolina transportation. And of course, I think we've got some of that in our packet also. I also attended uh, on the 23rd, day before my birthday, I attended Wayne County Social Services Board meeting. And our leading indicators overall are positive. They're looking pretty good, but we, we really discuss a lot of, of, of areas that really need improvement so uh i'm that's a that's still a learning and process for me uh being on the on the social services and also the wayne health department board which we will be meeting uh wednesday of this week on the 24th uh I attended the wayne county development life strategic plan community roundtable at wayne county community college we discussed the five-year plan for economic development in wayne county on the 26th, um, I attended in, um, the Manufacturing Summit in Wilson at Wilson Community College that was sponsored by, by NC East Alliance. That was an all-day event with a tour of the Bridgestone plant there in Wilson, which was unbelievable. These, these, this plant is turning out 32,000 tires per week. They have a half a million tires in their warehouse at any time, and they've got warehouse space rented from Wilson to Rocky Mount from private individuals. Uh, we have speakers from, of course, Bridgestone, Cummins Diesel, which is up the road, and NACO Material Handling, which is in Greenville, the, the Fort Lift people. But I think the highlight for Wayne County was is that Dr. Steve Hill, who's the executive director, for the STEM East. He did a great presentation on the STEM program, but he highlighted and really dwelt on the fact that the program of STEM is, it was role modeled from Wayne County. Everybody knows where Wayne County stands with STEM and workforce development. So everywhere I go, even in neighboring counties, Wayne County is the top of the list. We're, 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 top, we're top with our, our, our certifications, and um, there's a lot of work to be done, but we have really, really come a long ways uh, for economic development. 
I also attended the uh, Impact Wayne Investors meeting, which was at the Laughing Owl restaurant here uh, in downtown. And of course, well, the public may not know, but Impact Wayne uh, is a investors are a private sector and municip municipalities of Wayne County. And the Impact Wayne is a five-year program in cooperation with the Wayne County Development Alliance. And the purpose is, is to strengthen economic growth in Wayne County. <coughs> Impact Wayne can make a deal happen, in other words. If the county cannot come up with matching funds, for example, for a business that wants to move into Wayne County, Impact Wayne can step in and make that deal happen. On the 28th, I had the privilege of attending the Daffodil Festival in Fremont. And I can tell you, uh, the Embers still perform as good as they did when I was a teenager. Uh, that is the highlight of, of, the, of the Daffodil Festival. It was cold, wind was blowing, but it was still a good turnout. That night on the 28th, I uh, attended the uh, Friends of Seymour uh, Gala at, at Walnut Creek Country Club. The Friends of Seymour is a 501c6 organization that was formed to promote the continued vitality and sustainability of Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. And of course, General Larry Spencer, uh, Vice Chief of Staff of the U.S. Air Force, was the keynote speaker. And I'm telling you, if you go to sleep listening to him, you got a problem because he is he's very energetic. He has a story to tell of how you can <coughs> come up and pull yourself up by your bootstraps in the United States of America and really be what you want to be. He's a perfect example of that. Um, that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Mr. Kamari. Thank um, you, Mr. Mayor. I think pretty much uh, quite a few of us attended some of the same activities. Impact Wayne, uh, Mr. Mayo just spoke about. That was a nice event. Uh, the one that really sort of stood out for me, though, was the Friends of Seymour. Uh, we had an opportunity to hear uh, a gentleman speak about efforts being made on behalf of uh, working for Seymour Johnson and protecting uh, that interest. Uh, I had an opportunity to, uh, the seating was prearranged and I had an opportunity, my wife and I shared a table with uh, the gentleman who, whose job was to spell out exactly the work was being done. I, I like Mr. Mayo said, I did enjoy the Full Stock General, and uh, there was one thing that uh, he and John seemed to have had in common, other than the fact that they were in the Air Force. In their early youth, they had an opportunity to work on a farm and do some uh, plowing and so forth with mules. Uh, and he made a point yeah. of the fact that he knew what how to talk uh, farm language, uh, what you said to a mule to cause him to move up and stop. And it was so interesting that he said the mule got carried away and took a right turn and was plowed down some farm uh, plants. And he didn't know the word for stop except when he fell, he said, whoa. <laughs> and that is mule lane for stop. Yeah. I, I knew that. And I knew that John could identify with that. Uh, me to a lesser degree because I didn't have as much opportunity to do that kind of farming. But that was very interesting. And the gentleman did give a great presentation. Uh, coming from wages, I, uh, the day that we had the wages meeting, I was attending Joe Darty's transportation meeting, so I had a telephone update from the chairman of that uh, uh, group, and she wanted me to just share with you all that uh, this is the 50th anniversary, in the process of the 50th anniversary for the whole Head Start initiative of which wages is an outgrowth of that, uh, uh, back in the day they all got, that's where the start came from. And also, in our board packet, one of the things that they are also going to be highly involved in is this is Child Abuse Prevention Month. And she wanted me to share that they would be highly involved in that. And so I'm sure that you'll see some more things in the newspaper about that. I like my colleague here had an opportunity to go to Goldsboro High School, well, it's called the School of Engineering, but it's at the, on the site of Goldsboro High School. Uh, that's where the School of Engineering is located, just for public consumption. And they, the students were giving senior projects. 
I had participated at Southern Wayne some years ago and saw a young lady describe how to rebuild an engine. Uh, and so she had used that as her senior project. I think her granddaddy had been an auto mechanic and she went right through all the phases of taking the engine down and taking it to the, uh, to the uh, machine shop and doing all those things. And just in case she's still out there someplace doing this work, because she might just see this uh, uh, telecast or some of her relatives might, I, I, I would like for her to know that probably five or six or seven years ago, I've not forgotten hers. But I, I say that because how, what a great impact those youngsters can have on us when we have an opportunity to see them at their very best. And that's what we had an opportunity to do over at the School of Engineering was to see some children at their very best. Uh, one young lady wanted to uh, be a cosmetologist and another one was going to work for social service and a, another young man, uh, he did a project on why youth have to be violent towards each other or why minority youth are involved in violent activities. And it was so interesting because he gave a well-rounded reason as to why violent activities can get going. And at first, it sort of looked like it was just student to youngster to youngster. But in a very clever way, he showed how young people are involved in violent activities that come from all different directions, whether it be one-on-one -on -one in the neighborhood or at the playground, or whether it's perpetrated on our youngsters by some larger force. And he did not leave any entity out. He was very thorough. Uh, we had to rate them on their attire, their attire, and their presentation. They were all dressed appropriately. But this one young man, he was as dressed as I have ever seen anyone. Not flashy, just so appropriate. And so that was a great experience for me, and I just wanted to give a shout out to the School of Engineering and that group of teachers and principals over there who did an excellent job. Uh, I do want to add one other thing about the veterans, uh, John. Thank you for doing a great job of standing tall for other veterans. Uh, uh, and John loves to tell the fact that uh, sometimes folk refer to all the veterans and then they say, well, the Air Force was over there also. <laughs> John has a cute way of tossing that in. But um, they showed, they had the veterans there and they had uh, Vietnam natives who obviously were fighting on the side of the South. But they were, the only thing that I could think of that day, and I don't want to be too long, but the only thing I could think of that day, one or two of those guys were awfully young, or they still had the DNA that gave them the darkest hair I had ever seen. Uh, one, one or two of them was just almost jet black. I thought to myself, boy, I would love to know what that secret was so if I could see I could keep mine naturally that dark. But uh, it was good to see uh, the group and the differences in the, you know, the veterans coming from other places and how they uh, wanted to make sure that the Vietnam era veterans were never slighted again, uh, as obviously they were during that period of time. But I will close about that by saying this. I grew up in, in, around Fayetteville, and I always thought that veterans got their fair recognition around Fayetteville, and I guess since other places, bigger cities and other environments, they may not have, but uh, I, I always just would like to say publicly, I thought the veterans were always well respected around the Fayetteville area. That's where I grew up at. But it was a mighty fine event. It was a little chilly out there, but I did dress for it. and, and uh, and Mr. Mayor, I thought about coming to the Daffodil Festival, but by the time I left the veterans activity, I was just a little bit too chilly to go into myself. But I enjoyed the last several weeks of the things that I was able to do, and that concludes my remarks. Mr. Dunn. WCVA did uh, offer several roundtables uh, to discuss goals for the upcoming five-year plan. Uh, hopefully that will be introduced shortly. One of the topics that was discussed 
was creating a business incubator uh, division as well as the facilities to assist new entrepreneurs and startup companies here in Wayne County. Uh, a number of counties have looked at that. Uh, we all know that small business creates most of the jobs. Uh, many of the counties are seeing uh, a, a great deal of job growth from these startup companies. And I think that's something we need to look at in regards to growing our own. Uh, I attended my first jail meeting, which is hosted uh, ever so often, I think once a quarter, by uh, Judge Arnold Jones. Uh, it was extremely informative, and I encourage everyone to, to go to one of those meetings. Uh, thanks for all those that are working within Wayne County to, to uh, support the and hold down the cost of incarcerating inmates in our jail. Of course, we've already heard that the Gateway Board had met. Um, they discussed the rebranding process. All seems to be going along pretty well, and hopefully that will be rolled out this summer. Um, I also enjoyed going to Raleigh and meeting with our Senator Pate, uh, Representative Jimmy Dixon, and John Bell uh, to discuss the drafting of the bill that we need to fund the Agriculture and Convention Center. You know, that's the first time I've actually witnessed what the process is in the emphasis in regards to drafting a bill. Uh, we worked, uh, the Goldsboro City officials were there as well, and we, we all worked well uh, together to get that draft uh, and, and actually the bill introduced. I think it was introduced last Thursday, uh, just before the holiday. Um, and then on a personal note, let me speak on a matter. Our job as commissioner is to represent the taxpayers and citizens of Wayne County. And that is to ensure that their interests are represented. We really are the only voice for the taxpayer when it comes down to representation. We should uphold our oath to ensure that all contractual obligations are fulfilled. I take this obligation very seriously, and I'm sure the rest of my board does as well. I realize it's real easy to criticize commissioners. That's one thing I've learned. <laughs> but it's e real easy to criticize us when we take those tough, unpopular stands, but our oath requires that. And several of us have met with officials from the hospital board uh, to discuss payment for services. I want to remind the public in general of an agreement between Wayne County and the nonprofit company Wayne Health Corporation. This agreement, dated 1985, transferred the hospital to the nonprofit for only one consideration, and that consideration was providing medical care for the indigent. And as Forrest Gump says, says and that's all I have to say about that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Dart. Uh, I keep my comments as brief as I can. Uh, a lot of the things that I attended has already been mentioned, <clears throat> but I would like uh, uh, two or three that I need to talk about. Uh, on March 22nd, I had the pleasure of uh, going to the ribbon cutting at uh, First Pentecostal Holiness Church's New Generation Center. Uh, the congregation and, and uh, the membership of that church has invested several million dollars in a new building uh, behind the church, and it's, and it's geared just for uh, young people. I mean, from kindergarten right on up to junior high and high school. And, it, and the technology that they've got in that building uh, is, is amazing. And, it, and it's, you know, it's not only that church, but other churches are doing the same thing. But it's just, it was, you know, really refreshing to see. They realize that you've got to touch people when they're young. And, and that's what they're doing. And it's, it, it was quite a, quite a ceremony and, 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 and uh, really refreshing to see that there's people out in the public that is really got the concern of our young people at, at mind. I uh, also attended the uh, Chambers uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, board meeting. Uh, had not been able to attend that due to other conflicts, but I did attend uh, on March 25th. Also, as Mr. Darty mentioned, uh, on the 26th, went with uh, the, went to the quarterly meeting that Judge Jones uh, has 
to go over issues for the court system and uh, and and jail population and all and uh and like Mr. Doherty said, uh, if you get a chance to go to those once in a while, you need to go because it's it's you get a lot of information out of it. Also attended the uh, Impact Wayne uh, thing uh, that night on the 26th. Also uh, Vietnam Veterans uh, Memorial on the 28th, uh, the service they had over at the museum and then over at the uh, Veterans Park. Uh, quite quite touching. Uh, it's uh, you look at these vets and they didn't get the welcome that they deserved. Uh, that kind of hits home with me because they're the same age that I am. Uh, they sacrifice so much as all veterans have in, in, in past conflicts. But uh, it, it was good to see that group and, and, and finally tell some of them, you know, that, that they did a, a good job. Also attended the uh, Daffodil Festival, and as Mr. Mayo and Mr. Camardi said, uh, it was kind of chilly that day, but uh, they had a decent turnout for, for the, you know, for the cold weather. Uh, also uh, made the trip to Raleigh to talk to our representative Bell Dixon and Pate over, uh, you know, working with the city on the uh, Ag Convention Center. Uh, also attended the uh, annual Seymour uh, Johnson Gala at Walnut Creek, and as other commissioners already said, that was that was well worth the trip. It was uh, uh, the general. He started basically just like we have. I mean, he started out as a, as a young kid growing up on a farm and has worked his way up to a four-star general status. And uh, he, he was, that's what it's all about is, is, is what he's accomplished in his life. Also on March the 30th, uh, I attended the uh, Colash meeting at Greenleaf Church on North William Street. Uh, very informative. Uh, had about 50 people to attend. They do have another meeting planned. Uh, failed to bring the dates with me, uh, but uh, if any of you gets the chance to go to the next one, uh, 21st. what 21st. the 21st, and it's at, just get that to us after the meeting, okay? But it's on the 20, and it's very, very informative, and, uh, and uh, if you get a chance to attend, uh, they would greatly appreciate it. Also, uh, on April 2nd, I did go out to the Odom Farms for the We Dig It. Uh, I think they had something like 1,500 second graders. It was all second graders. And uh, those kids got a chance to see and do things that they had they'd had no clue on where some of their, where their food comes from. But it was, it, it, it was exciting. Because like I said, they, all of the second graders in, in schools or the public schools in Wayne County attended that. And it was, it was well worth the, uh, to go into that. And that's uh, basically all I have. Anyone else have anything? If not, do I have a motion we adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Have a motion on the floor we adjourn. Any discussion? If not, all in favor show sign. Right hand. Motion carries unanimous. Uh,